Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So a couple weeks ago, I shot out a video on Twitter about how I have my stream deck doing a bunch of things through their multi-action keys to kind of set up my stream before I start. Got a lot of people come back and say, Cardo, how did you do it? And so that's what this video is for today. So let's check it out. I'll give you guys a step-by-step -step, and I make your stream deck do everything you need before you start streaming. All right, guys, so we're at our desktop. What we're gonna do is first things first is uh, I wanna run you guys through a couple of the uh, restrictions, or not really restrictions, but how uh, programs in Windows work, right? So typically, when you open a program, I'm gonna use Chrome for this example, wherever you close it and then you go to reopen it is where it's going to be. So if I move this down here and I close it and I reopen it, it comes right back up in the same place, right? Um, this has a few exceptions. Okay, if you decide that you want to maximize your window, sometimes it can get a little wonky. Uh, or if you decide that you want to do half window setups like this, it can get a little wonky uh, for one of those in the past. The other thing that does uh, mess up with essentially last window positioning is if you uh, move your taskbar or you change the organization of your monitors, change resolutions, that things like that, right? But if you have a desktop that's pretty set, you don't really kind of mess with it much, then that's when this really works and it becomes very, very reliable. So what I do is before I actually start doing anything in Stream Deck is I set up my programs where I want them. And so what I'll do for this is I'll open Spotify. And I've already moved this over here, but just for reference, right? Like first time you open it, it's something like this or whatever. And so I'll just kind of drag it up in the corner and then manually resize the window down to where I want it. I'll do the same thing for Chrome. So we'll say I want Chrome uh, up in this corner. And essentially what I'm trying to do is, you know, I want to utilize all of my screen space. And then the last one is uh, stream labels. So I'll open up stream labels uh, and we will manually resize this one just a little bit. Again, I already did this before. That's why these are already pretty close, right? And so now if I close these and reopen them, uh, they will open right where I left them. And that's kind of important for the initial setup because once you have all your stuff set up, OBS will, works the exact same way. And again, the key thing here to make sure everything kind of always pops up where uh, you left it was not to use Windows resizing, but use manual resizing. So drag the window in the corner, get it where you want it, you know, size it how you want it and then leave it there. And when you close it and you reopen it, it'll show up in the same place again, right? And so that's kind of the, the foundation because then all we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Stream Deck to open your programs and they magically just kind of pop back in place right where you left them. So I'm gonna close these down. I'll get the Stream Deck uh, program software opened up and then we'll start making our macro. So as you know, this is the Stream Deck software. What I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna run you guys real quick through some of the commands we're gonna use and then we'll build a small uh, version of a multi-action key and then I'll actually take you through the one I use for when I start my stream. So a um, couple of things we're gonna pull from this. Uh, under the OBS Studio tab, we're gonna do scene selection, which is pretty straightforward. On the Stream Deck tab, we're gonna use multi-action as well as timers, and timers are very important. I'll run you guys through why here in just a little bit. On the system side of things, we're gonna do a website as well as open application. On Twitter, we're gonna have this thing send a tweet for us because we're lazy. <laughs> and then on the, I have a couple custom extensions installed as well. So we've got Philips Hue extension installed and we also have Spotify. In order to get these in the bottom right, there's a more actions button. You can kind of scroll through here and see what other things you can install in to the uh, Stream Deck software in order to have um, access so you can do more things from your deck. Now, uh, what we'll do, is we're gonna start out with a multi-action. So we'll pull that from the uh, Stream Deck subsection. And now this is essentially gonna be um, where we compile our list of things for the action to do. Now, what I typically start with with this is I go to System, Open Application, and I usually start with OBS. We're not gonna need to do that for this example because OBS is already running, obviously. So what we'll start with is we'll start with something like Spotify. You, uh, you know, click on explore. If you can't find the program you're looking for, you can just hit the Windows key, Spotify, and then open file location, copy, pasta, and then there's Spotify. And we can open that up. And now Spotify will be the first thing that happens. Now this is a delay and delays are important like I mentioned before. The, if you don't use any delays at all, what happens is you're gonna hit the button and the Stream Deck will execute everything immediately. 
when that happens, you can kind of, you know, it's a huge load on the computer, especially depending on how many different things you're asking it to do at once. And the longer the delay you put in there, um, the easier it will be for your computer to kind of go through step by step and process. Uh, I typically use between a one and two second delay between commands. Um, the older your hardware, the longer you're going to want that delay. Um, and then it just, I don't know, I just, I feel better when things just kind of open at a nice even pace instead of just kind of hitting the system all at once. So for the sake of the video, I'm going to use three seconds uh, for our delay. So after we have uh, Spotify open, we have a three second delay. We'll open another application. Uh, for this one, we'll do stream labels, which for me is in the same location as the Spotify shortcut. And then we will do another delay. So it's going to open Spotify, wait three seconds, open stream labels, wait three seconds, and then we'll have it do something uh, different. And this is when we get into some more of the custom stuff, right? And so if I want the uh, stream deck to change the color of my room, I've synced up my Philips Hue. And so now I can add a Philips Hue color control. And we'll say, I ah, will pick like teal. When I hit OK, the room will change. Okay, and that's how I know that everything is synced up on the side of the uh, of the of the lighting. Uh, I will change this back so we can see. Oop. But uh, that is what you need to do for that. So then we'll add another delay, and then from there uh, you can do things like uh, Spotify or uh, tweet, whatever you want to do, however you want to add things, right? Uh, so if you do Spotify, I will run you guys through this because this can be a little tricky. You can do something like playlist start. And now uh, there is a device recommended dropdown. Sometimes this works, sometimes this doesn't. Make sure Spotify is running uh, before you try this so it can actually sync into it. And again, you do need to sync your accounts. Uh, but essentially from this dropdown, you'll see your desktop. Just select your desktop. And then from there, you can search through your playlist and select the playlist that you want to start when you run the auto macro or the multi action, I should say. So. That's kind of an example of how to build something simple. The one that I'll show you guys here in just a moment, this is the one that I'll use. And it's gonna do things like stream labels, uh, Snip. Snip is a program I use for uh, timers. Snaz is a program I use to sync into Spotify so I can show sh uh, song titles and, and album uh, titles uh, on stream uh, via overlays and stuff. And there's just a lot of different things that I do in here. Uh, if you wanted to do something like I mentioned before, like tweet, down here you select uh, the account that you want to use and then you put in the tweet so for this example you know yo this is a test tweet for the automation video sorry for the spam but i love you and then you can also add an attachment so if you have like a standard tweet that you use every time before you go live you can just put it in here and then the stream deck will automatically send that tweet out for you when you use the multi-action um, i have it set up to switch my scenes so it sets me on my going live scene so i'm ready to go and all of this stuff kind of takes care of it. If you're super, super confident that you're ready to go live when you hit the button, you can also add in the command to just go live. And then in OBS, if you turn off the confirmation for going live, which I don't recommend, but you can do, you can legit start your stream with one button as well. Uh, but I do like to do the start stream manually just because um, typically I'll start this up and then I'll like go get coffee or something. And then while this is doing its thing. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna shut all this stuff down. Uh, I'm gonna set up uh, four screen display so you guys can see all my monitors at once and then uh, we'll hit the button let this thing do its thing and then you guys can see what i see from my side when i use the multi-action to start my stream all right guys so i wanted you guys to kind of see what i see from my perspective when i do uh hit my my multi-action key on my stream deck now the only thing i'm going to cheese in this is essentially manually expanding obs because obs is already running obviously that's what i'm using to record this uh, so i will expand that manually but everything else is all done via the auto macro multi-action key so let's check it out so that's going to start typically first thing to expand would be obs and then stream levels will uh, will pop in after that we'll get some more action as well spotify loads snaz loads this is our uh timer i use for the stream We've got Steam opening up, Spotify automatically starts playing, we open up Twitch browser, we open up Twitter, that kicks off as well. It's going to change the lights in the room, it's going to get my scene ready to stream. Now we're going to change it back. And then last but not least, and it should do this, I'm not totally sure it will or not because it does have a limit on how many times it can tweet per hour, but it should auto tweet. Um, I did it before, and you guys can kind of see this here see one new tweet there's a tweet for me i didn't do that 
you guys watch that kind of happen right here on the uh, on the stream and so therefore the auto tweet went out that would typically say yo i'm live come check out the stream and now everything is up and running all i gotta do is hit go live and i am good to go i hope you guys enjoyed this video hopefully you guys found this informative and uh, thank you guys for tuning in feel free to drop a like feel free to subscribe to the channel and until next time dudes stay excellent and be humble g to the g peace out